Ahead of next week's governorship elections in Kogi, Imo, and Bayosa states, President Bola Tinubu during the week urged all candidates participating in the elections to play by the rules and ensure free, fair, and credible polls. The president extended the same appeal to the electorate during the presentation of the All Progressives Congress flags to the governorship candidates in the elections. This comes amid the assurances by the National Security Advisor Nuhuri Badu that there won't be any interference in the governorship elections and that President Tinubu has no preferred candidates. While well, joining us in the studio to analyze the preparation by political parties, INEC and the electorate is a lawyer and former political election analyst at the EU Election Observation Mission to Nigeria, Ifayo Kerafo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, and joining us from our Lagos studio is a public affairs analyst, Dotun Oladipo, who's also the immediate past president of the Guild of Corporate Online Publishers. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so Thank let me start with you. Uh, what's, what's been your assessment so far about uh, the preparations for the election by INEC and, of course, the president's uh, view for all uh, parties, including the electorate, to ensure that we have an election that's uh, free, fair, and credible? This is the very first uh, major election for yeah. the president. Um, I think so far, um, as with INEC, INEC has shown that it would always try to be as prepared as possible. Um, for the elections. Um, as far as it's regarding fee free, fair, credible, you have situations where um, governors have put in place certain um, provisions which make it very difficult for parties to campaign, opposition parties, especially at state levels. Um, you have states where, you're, where the governors are saying you have to pay exorbitant prices for billboards or you know, governors basically um, taking out all the hotels. So it's very difficult for parties to campaign. And campaigns are part of the electoral process. If the campaigns are missing, it's very difficult to get the messages across to people. You know, I'll give the example of Inimo State or in Kogi State. In Inimo State in particular, where you have insecurity, so things like this affect the generality of the campaign. How prepared is INEC in handling the election on election day? We can only wait till that day to see whether they'll be able to transmit election results as you know they've said they would, um, and if there would be any problems, how they will handle those problems. So we'll be looking forward to seeing that. All right, and I come to you. Uh, talk to us about uh, the issues that we uh, have been experiencing in Kogi State at the moment, where, for example, Dino Melai uh, is accusing the APC of bringing in talks. The SDP is accusing the APC of not providing a free, fair, and credible atmosphere for elections to hold. And then Imo, we have seen what happened with the NLC president having issues. Uh, talk to us, sir. Uh, what exactly uh, your, your view is about these issues? Well, I think we've been um, very well assured um, that there will be adequate security. And from what we've seen in previous off-cycle elections, it's always much better in terms of um, security. Because this time around, the military, the police, the civil defense, they are not um, as thinly spread as they are during the general election. I think the major issue with IMO has been the persistent um, insecurity, which we've seen um, over the years. In a place like Kogi, for instance, what you've had has been um, clashes between party supporters. And at some point, we saw that the police and um, the Department of State Services intervened, called the political actors, invited them for um, meetings, but only one candidate refused to, to eat the call, and that's the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Murita Lajeka, which isn't good enough. If everyone is saying there must be a peaceful atmosphere and there is no attempt to arrest with the invitation, then there is nothing that stops you from eating such a, uh, an invitation and stating your own position on the things that have so far happened. But this didn't happen in that case. But really, I don't see violence being predominant in these elections. I don't see it. Because, 
like I said, there will be more security presence than it was during the uh, general election, being just three states uh, to be covered now. So, but Dalton, do you believe uh, President Tinubu when he actually says there will be a level playing ground for everyone, and this is the first major test for him uh, when it's this similar situation happened to uh, former President Buhari uh, in 2015? We could see that some opposition parties won some states, and of course the APC won some states. Uh, do you think that uh, Tinubu doesn't really have any preferred candidates that he would use the federal might? to protect in this election? I, I don't think he has. And um, honestly speaking, with what has happened so far with the um, tribunals and then up to the Court of Appeal and then Supreme Court in cases that don't involve him, I think what we have seen largely uh, uh, has been a judiciary that has been left to perform its duties. For instance, when you look at the issue of um, uh, Bayelsa, for instance, where the PDP is in power at the state level, there was an attempt to stop the candidate of the APC. He got his right back and his candidature was um, restored. In Kogi, just um, last week, the People's Democratic Party in the central won the case brought by its candidate, Natasha Aputiduagan, against a sitting senator elected on the platform of the APC, which is in power in the state and also at the federal level. So it's also going to happen, if not more, much more uh, in, in greater dimension under this administration than it was in the past. Because from what I can see so far, there is a level playing ground for everybody. What the parties need to do going forward, I mean, for, on the election day, is to ensure that they get their people out. Because that's why my own fear lies the fear of people not coming out to vote. Right, and I come back to you, fine. The issues of vote buying are there. I yeah. mean, when politicians can't get through uh, because there's uh, uh, adequate security and then uh, things are going smoothly by neck, the next thing they engage in is vote buying. We saw this happening so much when we had similar off cycle uh, okay. of, uh, uh, elections. Now, talk to us about that. And then, secondly, we have two incumbent governors that are going for re election Bayosa governor, Doyediri, and then of course, Imo Governor Hopu uh, do you think that this will also be a litmus test for the president? Because the thinking will be that since his party has Hopu Zodima, maybe he may be tempted to use the federal might to actually support him to you know, get re-elected. Uh, what do you make of all of this? Um, so first, uh, the issue of vote buying. Um, it seems to be a mainstay in our political space. And it seems to be very difficult to get rid of. Um, like you rightly mentioned, when there is no use of violence, there is use of money to coerce and maybe influence people to vote along particular lines. Um, and this was very, this I mean, in off-cycle elections, is very, very rampant. Um, in Kogi State, it happened. In Bayelsa, it happened where some local governments, um, some parties were paying between 1,500 naira and 6,000 naira. Um, so I don't see that being curtailed. It's going to be very difficult to curtail that. Um, but, you know, going forward, you know, we would have to learn lessons about how to move with, um, how to address this issue of vote buying. So it's going to be, it's definitely going to be in this election. It's just the question of the volume of it. How, how if it's going to be, um, what you say, maybe if, if it's going to be on a large scale or not. Um, and on the second issue of uh, whether, uh, the, you know, you have two uh, incumbent governors and whether, um, Bola is going to want to play his hand for, you know, Hopu Zodiman, for instance. Um, I think, first and foremost, when you talk about elections, elections are, you know, um, it's almost like a popularity contest, if you can put it that way. We're trying to see who is most popular in the States. I think uh, some weeks back or some months back, I think a month ago, um, there was a poll done in Imo states that showed that Hopu Zodima was you know, most likely going to win the elections amongst many other things. Um, but by 38% to show he's not so popular, but um, the other two candidates who are, he's contesting against are not exciting as well. So it's a bit, 
it's there a bit of candidates of the Labour yes, Party, Labour Party and, and the PDP. Uh, PDP. Not so exciting candidates, and you can see that in the way campaigns are going in the state. It's very dull. Uh, it's not very welcoming. I mean, if it was a different yeah, candidate. Yeah, but there are also talks here and there that there are intimidations by uh, the APC-led uh, state government there, yeah, and so yeah. that's why there's you, no conducive uh, yeah, you atmosphere have, for them to campaign. You have talks about that, but I mean, I, I'll give you an example. You know, you go to a place like Abombisi, which is a, a local government in Imo state that is strongly PDP, uh, but when you go there, there doesn't seem to be um, that desire for... I mean, the, the idea behind the elections is that our, a popular candidate wins the elections, our candidate wins the elections because it's popular, but you can see people are not very enthusiastic about the candidates. I mean, look at Kogi State, for instance. There's major enthusiasm about the candidates. All three of them, whether it is Dino Melai in PDP or, or Muria Jakai in SDP, you can see that there's this desire to want to come out to vote. So, I mean... Yeah, it's, that's it's, because there's no incumbent on the ballot. No incumbent on the, <laughs> but even, even, even when you go to, even when you go to Bayasa State, the APC is still able to bring out its members and you see people coming out saying that they are ready uh, to uh, come to vote in the election. But whether right. Bola is going to favor anyone or not, I, I think the the president, this is a big test for him, like you rightly said. And I think the best thing will be, I mean, in the interest of the country to show that I'm going to keep my hands to my back and watch all of you. Uh, all right. You and I'll come back to you, Dotu. Uh, does it mean that the election uh, having a charged atmosphere in Kogi State, the campaign uh, season there means that uh, uh, the... The, this is happening because there's no incumbent that's seeking re-election uh, based on what Ifine has said. Is that the reason why we are not seeing the same thing happening in Imo and Bayelsa? And then uh, people will say that uh, the, the, there's been the issue of intimidation here and there also in Imo and Bayelsa. Uh, but talk to us about, for example, former uh, uh, Minister Timi Pre Silva in Bayelsa State. Uh, when you have two incumbent governors seeking re-election, a governor who has direct access to the president, like Doye Diri, and yet you have a former minister who is of the president's party. Uh, well, maybe the president may want to, in one way or the other, support an incumbent governor like uh, Hopus Odima of his party. But that of Bayelsa, how can the president handle uh, such a situation? Uh, well, maybe before I address that, I think on the issue of vote vine, we should give kudos to the economic uh, Financial Crimes Commission and the Independent Corrupt Practices and other Related Offenses Commission. They've done a lot, quite a lot, in the last um, few elections. And this is reducing that tendency to openly bribe, especially because they made um, some arrests during the last um, general election. And I think this, we are going to see more of this. That's my belief. Well, I think what has happened generally in this um, uh, off-season, off-cycle election has been the fact that the political gladiators appear to be understanding better the political culture of their people. And they know that what is germane to them is winning the election and not about themselves alone. If it's about themselves, then they'll probably have done things differently. And I'm going to cite examples very quickly. In Bayosa, for instance, between Silva and Diri, one would have expected that because a ruling party at, this, at the federal level is there, there will be some uh, backing. But even with, without that backing, with or without it, what we can see on ground is that the People's Democratic Party, to which Diri belongs, has done a lot of rethinking with what happened to the party four years ago. When you look at the result four years ago, what the man who won then but was disqualified and his, um, uh, his election nullified was huge in terms of difference to what happened in the PDP then. And the result that came out, David Lyon then had 352,552 votes, whereas Diri had 143,172 votes. Well, over, I mean, the, the margin on quantifiable. But what happened between then and now was that Diri has gone back and has realized that 
the cohesion of that party is going to determine his re-election. All the People's Democratic Party chieftains that were out of the party are back now. All you right. can see them in the party. And that is what Silva is losing because his own people are working against him. All right. When you look at Imo. Very quickly, please. Very the quickly. man in Imo 2 has, yes, very quickly. The man in Imo 2 has solidified the party. His decision to change his, his running mate from his deputy was a major one. You look at Kogi State too. Everybody that matters in the in the in the state is 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 all of almost all of them are in the APC and they are living at peace. They have, I mean, a, 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 a minister now who is the son of the man that um, uh, the incumbent took over from when he died. That's Aldo yeah, Abubakar. So a lot of things are happening. You know. Yes, a lot of things are happening that these governors are now beginning to see that they cannot run the race alone. All right, so I'm they afraid are doing uh, all they can I'm to ensure that they don't lose it. All right, I'm afraid that's where time can permit us to go at the moment. Uh, Dotun Oladipo is the immediate past president of the Guild of Corporate Online Publishers. He's also a public affairs analyst. We must thank you immensely for helping us to understand the issues ahead of next weekend's election in Kogi, Bayelsa and Imo. And of course, uh, we've got uh, Ifain Okerafo, who has been here with us in the studio. He's uh, a political analyst, uh, former political election analyst at EU Election Observation Mission to Nigeria. We must thank you for helping us to understand this. And we just hope that uh, uh, the threat by the NLC to actually ground Imo State yeah. because of what happened to its president doesn't affect the uh, governor Very there. Much. We just hope all those issues will be settled and there won't be chaos on election day. And of course, to our voters out there, please ensure that uh, you do not allow people to buy your votes and buy your conscience. Well, that's the much we can take on this edition of This Week. Thanks to our production team here in Abuja, Lagos and London. We will join us same time next week for another exciting edition. I'm Samasam.